Hey guys, we're carrying on with the NVIDIA latest releases and today we've got the RTX 4070 Ti Super for you. This one is the Asus Tough Gaming variant, which on the surface mirrors the non-TI version, but packs a bit more of a punch under its cooler. The RTX 4070 Ti Super is particularly intriguing in terms of performance, so let's dive in and explore what it offers. First up some key details. The 4070 Ti Super cards are hitting the market starting at $799 US dollars, with partner cards like this Asus variant typically costing a bit more. Compared to the non-Super version, this card boasts an additional CUDA cores, RT cores and Tensor cores, along with a revamped memory interface. We're looking at an upgrade from 192-bit bus to 256-bit, plus an additional 4GB of VRAM. I think this change will be most noticeable in 1440p and especially 4K gaming. But before we delve into gaming performance, let's discuss this card's power consumption and efficiency. Running Time Spy Extreme in a loop, we've measured its power consumption using NVIDIA PCAT and found that it consumes 286 watt, aligning perfectly with NVIDIA specification. In terms of power efficiency, we've analyzed the frame rate output against power usage. Here, the new card finds itself comfortably in the middle of the pack, alongside AMD's RX 7900 XD. Regrettably, we don't have the original 4070 Ti for the direct comparison, so our video will focus on how this card stacks up against the other market contenders and the 4070 Super that we reviewed last week. Before going into the gaming performance, let's kick off with a V-Ray test. Using CUDA, the 4070 Ti Super scored 17% higher than the 4070 Super, and we've observed similar margin when leveraging the RTX technology. In our custom Blender render, the 4070 Ti Super with optics almost matched the performance of the 1490 using CUDA. This narrow performance gap has me eagerly anticipating next week's launch of the 4080 Super. In the DaVinci Resolve test by Puget Systems, the new card outperforms the 3090, but lags a bit behind the latest AMD cards due to the lower Fusion score. For those primarily using Fusion in DaVinci Resolve, AMD might be a better choice. However, as an avid user of the software, I usually prioritize other aspects over Fusion, so your choice may vary depending on your specific workflow. Now let's jump into the gaming benchmarks, starting with the rasterized games. In Shadow of a Tomb Raider at 1440p, the new Supercard matches the RX 7900 XT's performance. This is particularly interesting given the AMD's price drop on these models. I will expand on that more later on in the video. At 4K resolution, the 7900 XT takes a 4% lead in average FPS and almost 5% and 1% lows. It's not a huge lead, but win is a win. Next up is Horizon Zero Dawn. At 1440p resolution, we see 4070 Ti Super outperform both AMD cards by 10% and 3% respectively on average FPS. And in 1% lows, the lead extends to 12 and 11%. Up in the resolution to 4K, we see 7900 XTX outperform the new Super by 8% in average FPS and 10% in 1% lows. Nevertheless, the 4070 Ti Super remains a strong competitor against the 7900 XT, outpacing about 10% in average FPS and 3% in 1% lows. Just like we've mentioned in the 4070 Super review, the link is in the description below, the larger fast VRAM in this game really makes a difference at higher resolution. In World War Z, even at 4K, the AMD cards really dominate. The 7900 XT leads the Super card by 9% on average FPS and 3% on 1 percentiles. The margin widens to 27% when compared to the 7900 XTX. Shifting our focus to Formula 1 2022 with ray tracing enabled, but without upscaling. At 1440p, the 4070 Ti Super surpasses the 7900 XT by approximately 8% in average FPS and 14% in 1% lows. While it slightly trails XTX variant in an average FPS, it outperforms it in 1% lows. Next we have results with upscaling, and quick note here. We were not able to redo our AMD tests with the new fluid motion frame technology, so we'll only feature the standard FSR 2 and 2.1 in the tests. So in Formula 1 2022 at 1440p, we see very similar average FPS from both 4070 Ti Super with DLSS 2 and 7900 XT with FSR 2 enabled. However, AMD card struggles with the 1% lows. Enabling DLSS 3 changes the story, and now the new card is ahead of others, but we're missing the AMD results, so we can't really comment here. In Cyberpunk, we can jump straight into the 1440p with upscaling enabled, and here at the top of the chart is just dominated with the NVIDIA cards. 
The difference from 1700 XTX to 4070 Ti Super using DLSS2 is 22% on average FPS and 8% on one percentiles. This is the more expensive AMD card, so the difference is pretty significant. When going up to 4K, the difference widens to 29% on average FPS and 25% on one percentiles. What is probably more important here is the actual frame rate. With the new supercard, you can maintain your frame rates above 70, and unfortunately with the AMD card, you'll have dips to 46. This is not taking DLSS 3 into consideration. We'll incorporate AMD's new fluid motion frame technology in the future tests, but at the current stage, even without looking at the frame generation, at best, the cards are competitive, and at worst, Nvidia cards just run laps around AMD's offerings. Responding to the requests from our last video, we've also included some temperature data for components like memory, VRM, and hotspots. These are from the custom burn-in test on the card when we push it as hard as possible for about 15 minutes. I would say this particular cooler design is doing well to control the temperatures here. For future content suggestions, feel free to comment below. Now to close this off. AMD recently announced price cuts on 7900 XT cards, with some brands offering them for $750 or even less. We've even spotted deals as low as $720. This pricing shift makes it challenging to outright recommend a specific card, but here's our take. For those who want to play slightly lighter titles or just standard rasterized games, the 7900 XT is probably the better value card right now. In contrast, the RTX 4070 Ti Super caters more for gamers seeking enhanced ray tracing and upscaling capabilities. The other big thing is the extras you get with the card. Nvidia has been actively advancing its capabilities in AI and streaming technologies. So if your usage extends beyond gaming, considering Nvidia might be a more suitable choice. Overall, I'm glad that there are options in the market and it's encouraging to see both companies actively competing. If you want to check out any of the items covered in the video, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.